According to Susan Brookhart, assessment literacy is understanding the properties of data on student learning so that teachers are able to make inferences about learning. Assessment literacy involves specifying what specific learning you are measuring, understanding how the questions or tasks form a sample of learning, understanding properties of the scales, numbers, or categories used in the measurement, and being able to reason from all of these things to make a sound interpretation and decision. During this module, we will walk through the purposes and uses of data, discuss student learning around data, and understand what a balanced assessment system looks like. First, we are going to begin with the purpose and use of data. Data is used for so many different things to answer questions about students, classes, programs, teachers, and schools. But first and foremost, the data you want to use should have a specific and intended purpose. You need to decide what you want to collect the data for and be sure that that data shows what the students can and cannot do, which allows you to provide the interventions and enrichments that are needed. Take a minute to pause this video to complete the following task. Make a list of a topic in which you would like to have more data to help you better understand what your students know and don't know about their learning. Then brainstorm particular needs of what you would like to know about your students and their learning. When you are ready to resume the rest of the module, click play to continue. Now that you have a list of data that you currently use in your classroom and data that you want to collect, let's talk about the different types of data. Brookhart has designed a way to organize and describe different types of data. She has created a four quadrant framework that allows teachers to group different kinds of data according to general data types and purposes to examine how they complement each other. Take a minute to examine this framework. What do you see? What do you think and what do you wonder? Jot down your answers and when you are finished reflecting, select play to continue our discussion about the framework. Two ways that we can look at this framework is through purpose and focus. Let's begin with purpose. You wanna ask yourself, what is the intended purpose for collecting this data? Do I wanna use formative or summative data or perhaps a collection of both? And also think about the focus. Focusing on where is the information centered? Am I going to use the information I collect for individuals, classrooms, or schools? Using multiple pieces of data to collect information to guide learning is a great practice. Formative assessment, interim benchmark data, accountability assessments, and grading are all different types of pieces of data that we will explore during this module. Let's first begin with formative assessment. My purpose is to collect formative data on my individual students and classroom as a whole. Here, learning is active and is a process that both teachers and students can take part in. Teachers are continuously gathering data to help change instruction on the spot and improve student understanding. This should take up the majority of your time when administering assessments because it provides you with the most information about students during their learning and allows you to make changes. Take a minute to pause this video to brainstorm a list of formative assessments that you can use with individual students and a classroom as a whole. When you are ready to continue through the module, select play. Next, let's discuss interim assessments. Here, my purpose is to collect formative data, but my focus is much larger. I'm going to be thinking about a school-wide or district-wide. Learning continues to be active with interim assessments, but teachers are the ones who use the data, not students. This is used to inform instructional planning for students in the future instead of on-the-spot instructional changes. Students are not a part of this data analysis and collection process. Take a minute to pause this video to brainstorm a list of formative interim assessments with a large-scale focus, such as a school or a district. Think about what you could use or build that would help with your instruction. When you are ready to continue through the module, select play. Grading's purpose is summative. That allows teachers to focus on classroom instruction as a whole. According to Brookhart, classroom grading comes in two forms. First being the individual grades, which are summative assessments via test or performance assessments and any other graded assignment and secondly, report card grades. 
classroom grades are usually reflective of chunks of learning versus formative snapshots of learning that occur throughout instruction. Take a minute to pause this video to brainstorm a list of grades that you collect and what they are assessing. Think, are these reflective of my students' progress towards their learning goals and summative of what they know and understand? When you are ready to continue through the module, select Play. Accountability assessments have a purpose of providing summative data to a large-scale group, such as a school or a district. Here we are discussing PARC and other state-mandated tests. These assessments are norm reference and certainly have a place in learning, but do not provide information for the classroom teacher on a daily basis. Take a minute to pause this video to brainstorm a list of large-scale assessments that you administer. Think. How do I use data from PARC and other state-mandated assessments? When you are ready to continue through the module, select Play. Clearly, all types of data have a place in learning and should be used when appropriate. Burkhart feels that achieving balance within your assessment system is important, but doesn't necessarily feel that it should be divided equally. Burkhart created a four-quadrant system and privileged the classroom-level data by devoting half of the framework to it. The classroom is the place where learning happens, and if we ignore the information closest to the learning, we lose a lot of fine-grained and diagnostic information. Take a minute to stop and reflect on Burkhart's four quadrants. Closely look at the way it is organized and pay close attention to the formative assessment box. If you notice, steps are used to represent formative assessment because it is truly the stepping stones teachers and students can and must use to reach success in learning. In closing, reflect on your current understanding of assessment literacy. Think about the assessments you use in your classroom for instruction and where they might fall in that four quadrant chart. Think about how can you use the data you collect purposefully to improve student achievement.